What exactly does timeline mean when you're talking about someone whose defining feature is traveling through time and space? Maybe you're new to New Who, or you could just use a New Who read-through. But the Doctor has been through quite a lot when he appeared in England and told Rose it was nice to meet her, and she should run for her life. With the 13th series starting production, let's take a look at how we got here. The first hurdle in keeping track of what's gone down in the TARDIS is just how long the Doctor has been around. The character first appeared in 1963 and ran more or less consecutively until 1989, with a movie in 1996, and not to mention all the radio shows and books. In 2005, Russell T. Davies revived the iconic science fiction series with Christopher Eccleston as the ninth iteration of the Doctor, kicking off what's sometimes called New Who, which has fostered an entire new generation of fans. Fifteen years later, New Who isn't all that new, and has developed its own canon. While we couldn't hope to give a comprehensive timeline going all the way back to 1963, we can at least cover the basics that precede the first appearance of Doctor No. 9. Doctor Who follows the adventures of a Time Lord, a being from Gallifrey who has a time machine that's bigger on the inside and on the outside looks like a police call box. Time Lords can live hundreds of years, and as a bonus, when they die, they just regenerate into somebody new, which is what makes Eccleston number nine. Traveling through time and space isn't any fun if there isn't someone there to ask, what is it, Doctor? So the Doctor travels with companions, most of which don't fare well in the end. During the Doctor's travels, a lot of enemies have been made, but there's definitely a big three. Of course, there's the Daleks, cosmic death machines with gooey organic centers and oddly menacing plungers. The Cybermen seek to convert living beings into, well, more Cybermen. And then there's the Master, an evil Time Lord who has a heavy beef with the Doctor. With those elements in place, let's introduce the Doctor to a woman named Rose Tyler. Every Doctor has their own personality and quirks, but the Ninth carries a particular weight to him. That's because, as he eventually tells Rose, he's the last of his kind, and he's the reason there are no more Time Lords. Sometime between the last time we saw the Eighth Doctor and now, the Daleks and the Time Lords were locked in a vicious war, and the Doctor ended it by taking both players off the board entirely to save the fabric of reality. Yeah, that's got a way on your mind a bit. After Rose helps the Doctor with a kind of evil mannequin problem, she's invited aboard the TARDIS to join the Doctor in his travels. Not that the travels always go that far, as the Doctor and Rose spend some time solving a fake alien invasion by the Slovene. Well, they are aliens and they have invaded, but it happened a long time ago and the spaceship that ran into Parliament was actually launched from Earth. Their plan is to spoil the Earth and sell it for parts like a galactic house flipper. In the process of dealing with that, a low-level but dedicated public servant, Harriet Jones, ends up being thrust into the Prime Minister position after it turns out the entire cabinet was just the Slovene in people suits. The Doctor also finds out that in his effort to rid reality of Daleks, he missed one in a millionaire's exclusive collection. During a trip to World War II, they meet a space scoundrel named Jack Harkness, a smooth-talking space hustler who will become a recurring member of Team Doctor. That is when the Doctor, Rose, and Jack reach a space station full of automated versions of popular game shows, turns out run by the Emperor Dalek. This time, the Dalek manages to do quite a bit, including killing Captain Jack. That death doesn't take, however, because Rose looks into the heart of the TARDIS, which gives her domain over space and time. Using that power, she revives Captain Jack and destroys the Emperor Dalek and sends the Bad Wolf sign throughout time to make sure she arrives at this moment. Heart of the TARDIS power is pretty neat, but it's also, like, a lot. It's too much for anyone to handle, really, so the Doctor has to absorb that power from Rose. He can't handle it either, but he can regenerate, and Rose can't. So he does. Exit Christopher Eccleston as the Ninth Doctor, off to become Malekith and Thor of the Dark World, and enter David Tennant as the Tenth Doctor. This becomes our first look at a new Who regeneration, and it's a bit of an ordeal. Though what makes this one significant, aside from being first, is how badly it goes. Mostly, that's down to a pesky alien invasion that happens during the regeneration. And it's happening during Christmas! The invasion means the Doctor has to get on his feet a little early, which ends in a sword fight in his PJs that goes all Skywalker when he loses a hand. Unlike a Skywalker, though, we find out that if a Time Lord gets injured so close to regeneration, they're able to just regrow the missing bit. Naturally, he keeps the severed hand, because you never know. The new Doctor also learned quickly that even the best-intentioned politicians can disappoint, as Harriet Jones orders the Torchwood organization to shoot down the invading spaceship after the Doctor convinces them to leave. 
The doctor begins the decline of Harriet's term by whispering the six words, don't you think she looks tired? So wait, what's Torchwood exactly? The 10th Doctor travels to Victorian England and saves Queen Victoria from werewolves. You know, like you do. But Queen Victoria, well, she was not amused. Finding the Doctor and Rose too saucy for her tastes, she forms an organization to deal with folks like the Doctor named after the estate, Torchwood. This becomes a spin-off that features Captain Jack, who when Rose brought him back to life became immortal. Eventually, they find a parallel universe fighting Cybermen where Rose's long-dead father is still alive. Back in our universe on Earth, they discover that what people assume are ghosts have appeared, and what's more, everyone seems super cool with it. One thing you learn in Doctor Who, if everyone's super cool with something strange, then it's probably pretty bad. In this case, it's really bad. Torchwood had found an interdimensional ship that they couldn't open but could juice enough to weaken the barrier between universes, namely the one with Cybermen in it who are the ghosts everyone's seeing. To make matters worse, the ship the Torchwood was dinking around with was a Dalek ship. Daleks and Cybermen are not two great tastes that taste great together, and they go to war immediately. This is why we can't have nice things. The Doctor figures out a way to shunt everyone back to their proper universe, but that ends up including Rose in a one-way trip, separating the Doctor and Rose. Well, for the most part. The Doctor has a brief run-in with a runaway bride named Donna that will come back around, but before that he meets Martha on the moon, where the hospital they find themselves in definitely should not be. At the far end of time, they run into a kindly old man looking after some refugee children. Except it isn't a kindly old man. It's the Master, who had hid his Time Lord identity in a watch. Oh yeah. The Master goes back in time, gets himself elected Prime Minister on a policy of, I totally can communicate with this benevolent alien species, which turns out to be the altered children from the future caught in flying death balls. The Doctor ends up captured, where the Master cranks up the Doctor's age clock while Martha wanders the land telling tales of the Doctor, which leads to the Doctor getting his mojo back, baby, and defeating the Master. Remember Austin Powers? You guys remember Austin Powers, right? Yeah. Well, the Doctor's plans to take the Master, the only other Time Lord left, and finish out their days together are undone by the woman the Master married for appearances who shoots the Master instead. Realizing that her and the Doctor will never be more than just friends, Martha does something few people do. She walks right off the TARDIS. Bye-bye, Martha. Oh, hello, Donna. It turns out that Donna is the most important person in the universe for teaming up with the Doctor, according to a dimension-skipping Rose. They also meet a woman who claims to be the Doctor's wife named River Song, only the Doctor doesn't remember that at all. But she knows the Doctor's real name, and he is a time traveler, so anything's possible. Unfortunately, she doesn't quite make it out entirely alive, instead having her conscience downloaded into a massive library. Thanks to the magic of time travel, the Doctor starts his relationship by seeing its end. Speaking of dimensions skipping, the Earth ends up in the wrong one when Davros, the creator of the Daleks, uses it to build a reality bomb. In the process of sorting it out, the Doctor gets shot. But instead of regenerating, he shunts that energy off to his severed hand in a jar, which Donna ends up touching it, both generating a Doctor clone and getting Time Lord brain powers. Sadly, being human, Donna can't handle that much juice, so the Doctor has to reabsorb it and erases Donna's memory in the process. Not quite a choice, but Donna gets to walk off the TARDIS as well. Goodbye, Donna. A cult gets the super bad idea, as cults do, to bring back the Master who alters the DNA of everyone to be him, except the Doctor and Donna's grandpa, Wilfred. We also learn part of what made the Master such a jerk. When he looked into the vortex of time and space, he got a pattern of drumming stuck in his head forever. Naturally, the Doctor sorts this out, but not without Wilfred getting a lethal dose of radiation, forcing the Doctor to absorb it, and forcing regeneration and feeding Peter Parker his last line in Endgame. I don't want to go. Exit David Tennant, off to play Kilgrave the Purple Man in Marvel's Netflix series Jessica Jones. Enter Matt Smith. The youngest person to play the Doctor, Smith brought a manic energy to the Doctor and is the reason your geeky friend keeps insisting bow ties are cool. While Tennant's Doctor might have uttered the hand wave phrase timey-wimey to explain the complicated nature of time in Doctor Who, Smith's run is the timey-wimeyest of all. It starts off with his new companion, Amelia Pond and Amelia's fiancé Rory getting summoned to Roman times with the Doctor to investigate the Pandorica, a box said to hold the greatest threat to the universe. Well, if you're an alien society up to no good, the worst thing in the universe is the Doctor. 
Yep, the Pandorica is meant for the doctor. Except a robot Rory shoots Amelia and the doctor slides her in the Pandorica and leaves her there for a thousand years until a young Amelia Pond touches it, coating it with her DNA and reviving Pond. During that whole time, Rory stood guard over the Pandorica in the robot Centurion body. At some point, the gang gets a strange invitation to a lake to watch the doctor get shot by an astronaut, then shot again during regeneration, killing the doctor for good. When the doctor shows up again, they learn that the person they saw die was the doctor 200 years from now. They're told there's nothing they can do about it. But of course, they do something about it. In the interim, Amy announces that she's pregnant. And then she is, but the she that's on the TARDIS isn't Amy, and the doctor and Rory go all out to find her, arriving not in time to prevent the child from being taken, but plot twist, the baby is River Song a mistranslation of the name Amy and Rory gave her. Oh yeah, it gets weirder. Since River was conceived in a time machine, she has regeneration energy, and while she didn't get to be raised by Amy and Rory, she did, in a different form, get to be Amy's teenage bestie. Still not done being weird, River is also the person in the spacesuit that kills the Doctor. Only she refuses and kicks reality into a dimension where all of time is happening at once. To save reality, the Doctor convinces her to go back and shoot him. To save himself, he hides out in a life-size robot of himself to create the illusion that the Doctor had died. Rory gets taken by a weeping angel, you know, a completely terrifying alien that poses as an angel statue when you're looking at it, but the second you blink, they rush you and feed off your energy. In this case, they've created a timeless hotel in 1938 New York to feed off of Rory's time energy for a really long time. The rescue goes well after a trapped Rory and Amy jump off the building, creating a paradox, only for Rory to get recaptured. Amy decides the rest of life is fine wherever Rory is, and joins the guy. Exit Rory and Amy Pond, with Arthur Darville going off to become Rip Hunter on the CW's Legends of Tomorrow and Karen Gillan going off to play Nebula in the MCU. The Doctor encounters a woman with the same face and name of one who dies at the end of each episode, only to find yet another one in our modern England. This is Clara, the impossible girl. What makes Clara impossible is a bit of shenanigans at the Doctor's grave, a place he's not supposed to go. But an old foe with a great intelligence and an alien species called the Silence, who you forget seeing as soon as you can't see them, forces the Doctor's hand. The Doctor's tomb contains his complete timeline, which the great intelligence hopes to enter to turn all of the Doctor's victories into defeats. Instead, Clara follows him in and re-nudges all those victories, meeting all the iterations of the Doctor, including a secret Doctor, the War Doctor. What happened during the Time War is not at all what the Doctor thought happened, and it takes a team up of the 10th and 11th Doctor and the War Doctor to figure it out. Instead of destroying Gallifrey, the Doctor hid it with the help of all of his iterations, including one yet to happen. Once word got out that the Gallifreyans are actually in a pocket dimension, everyone who hates a Time Lord gathers at Trenzalor, the gravesite of the Doctor to prevent Gallifrey from coming back, causing the 11th Doctor to run out his clock defending it until Clara convinces them to give him another regeneration since he was fresh out. Exit Matt Smith, off to play Luxius Crown in the upcoming Morbius movie in Sony's Spider-Verse. Enter the angry Scotsman Peter Capaldi. Capaldi's doctor is a hard departure from his younger previous selves. He relies on Clara to relate to people. Just in time for the new cranky doctor, a strange woman shows up collecting the peoples that die during the doctor's adventures, and eventually Clara's new boyfriend, Danny Pink. That mystery woman is the newly regenerated master, now going by Missy, and she's using the dead to create a Cyberman army to give to the doctor to prove a point. Instead, Cyberman Danny commands the Cyberman army to destroy themselves. Clara tries to find a death that will stick by taking someone's Chronolock tattoo, but the Doctor pulls her before the moment of her death to help with a problem with Rassilon, the leader of the Gallifreyans who is concerned the Doctor is the hybrid, prophesied to stand in the ruins of Gallifrey. The Doctor and Clara have a bit of a mind-wipe tug of war, with the Doctor losing his memory of what Clara looks like and Clara returning to Gallifrey to die just like she was supposed to. The Doctor's new companions convince him to try and rehabilitate Missy, but when a different version of the Master shows up with another Cyberman plot, that goes awry. Missy ultimately betrays her other generational self and dies in the process. This also fatally injures the Doctor, forcing a regeneration. Exit Peter Capaldi, off to play the Thinker in the upcoming Suicide Squad movie. 
Enter the 13th Doctor, Jodie Whittaker. This time a woman, she doesn't carry as much of the anger and angst of her previous iterations, approaching her adventures with almost wide-eyed joy, though she's still the Doctor and not past giving an angry speech now and then. The new regeneration of the Master shows up right on time with another group of aliens from another dimension. He also has a secret. Gallifrey has been destroyed, which he reveals as he's sucked into that dimension. The Master's not done racking things and blowing the Doctor's mind, though. The Master is on Gallifrey, turning all the dead Time Lords into Cybermen, or Cyber Lords. Also, big reveal, the Doctor is not actually Gallifreyan. She's from another dimension, and the ability to regenerate was copied from her and given to the Time Lords. Oh, and the Cyber Lords explode. Well, that brings us current with the new Who. With such broad strokes, fill in your favorite moment from new Who or tell us what comic book character you think Jodie Whittaker will play when she leaves the role. While you're at it, be sure to subscribe to CBR for the latest videos straight to your inbox. Thanks a lot for watching.